So you might have seen my latest video on the greatest hack painting, speed paint. What I want to do today is use the Minotaur from a previous video I did that we downloaded from Luke Studios, where I showed you where to find some of the great STL files you can find online. And buying that with speed paint to give us colored, detailed, finished product. And this took an hour and a half and I've only used speed paint. If you're new to 3D printing, you might not have explored painting your miniatures or your models after you've printed them. I'm here to show you an extremely useful tool for somebody who's a complete novice at painting to go from a 3D printed model and how to take that through from a primed model to a finished piece and put a clear coat on and display on your shelf. If you're not that creative or you're not experienced in painting, acrylic, watercolor, anything like that, this tool will help you out. What I'm talking about is Army Painter Speed Paints, but I'm here today to show you how I achieved this model in only an hour and a half painting and using no acrylic and only speed paint. The printed model without any primer. One difference that I'm going to do today over a previous video where we applied speed paint to a white primer, use the Zenithol Prime which, to be honest, is a nice easy step. Pops out the detail on any model whatsoever. But I tend to get a Zenithol Prime on pretty early. So if you're sitting on my shelf, they look a little bit nicer than just a grey model. And you can see how well the speed paint gets some coverage with some of the black primer and some of the shadows in there. I can tell you now, with the finished model, it came up pretty well. One coat. Haven't done any extra highlighting or shadows. And still able to get some of the detail in there. And I'll show you how I did that. Now, what I want to do here is showcase a couple of the speed paints. So what I want to do is get a base coat of these speed paints on, um, which will cover 60 to 80 percent of the model. And see how it goes after the first first layer is dried. Stop on my head for this guy. But I think I'm going to use the grey and the black for his skin and fur, so I think I'll go with the runic grey for all of his skin. When we get into this fur, and especially around the black back there, we'll use the grim black, which will give him quite a dark look. Um, hopefully we won't have to do a second coat, uh, we'll see if we need to do any touch-ups, I'm thinking probably on the back. Yeah, we've got a majority of black primer. We'll have to do a couple of coats. But once we've got that base coating done in speed paints, we'll see how, how good it looks. And I'm going to leave a lot of these details, especially the metallics and some of the fine details, um, which we'll touch up with some speed paints. So, and then we've got some coloured bone. We'll obviously do his horns, any other parts of bone I can find. Uh, make these pieces of his armor pop. I think I'm going to go with the slaughter red. And we'll go with the hardened leather. We'll use this for the straps. Grey looks still sort of dried, black still drying, red starting to pull, red went on really nice. Alright, we'll let this dry, come back and have a look. Alright, so our first coat's dried, looking pretty good. So it's looking pretty reasonable, it's been about 20 minutes work so far. You can see it has pulled away from some of those high points with the red. So. I'm going to introduce a couple more colours, let's get into it. And I want to play with High Lord Blue and we'll give it a go over some of the metal. So obviously you're going to use the wood, dark wood, all of the wood detail on the handles. We'll, we'll try the white, holy white, for some of the bandages, uh, potentially these bandages. Grab or grey some of the metal. And 
see what we come up with and how much we need to touch up later on. So just put those extra base coats on, it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna let this dry. Pretty happy with the speed paint side of things. I think I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna touch up some of these metals, just touch up some of the buckles, some of the chains, and then maybe just detail the eyes in. So far, speed paint wise, 45 minutes. But we'll let this dry, then we'll come back and look at finishing the details. Right, here we are. First coat's dried. This is pretty good. See the xenophobe coming through. What I'm going to do now is just use some of the remaining colours and we'll completely finish this. Put up all these small details just using the speed paint. Should give us a good gauge on what a finished model can look like. Like I said, I'm just give it those final little touches. Let me get to it. And we could probably use a purple around that detail of the rope here. Got a yellow, which could double in some of the gold areas. Would be just about most of the colors used so even if you just invest in some speed paint and some primer then you can at least get it to this this finish but with one coat of speed paint so we'll finish detailing it all i've used is speed paints i've done it in three blasts and then just let it dry in between each coat you can see we can detail with speed paint as well so if you're new to 3d printing and you've just started printing miniatures invest in some speed paints and it's pretty quick and easy way to just take your models a step further for display hey if you really enjoy painting it you want to take it a step further the next step is for us to go through with some acrylics with a dry brush some details in here use some metallics doing some edge highlighting, doing a bit of extra detail shading, some wet blending. Uh, there's a whole heap more you could do to this, but even just as a quick one and a half hour project, we'll turn that from its primed coat into something you could put on your display shelf. But I'll we'll let it dry, and then I'll get some nice quality photos, some of the details, and we'll have a look, see how the uh, final product comes back. So hopefully you enjoyed that display. Uh, I spent three half hour blocks doing this and then gave them time to dry in between each blast. I started with the big heavy skin the fur just to get that look. I didn't really have a colour scheme in mind when I started so I just sort of made it up as we went but even without the use of metallic using that speed paint to accumulate some gold and the metal all in all come out pretty reasonable for an hour and a half. It's something I can put a t-coat on and display on my shelf now. So if you enjoyed that video and you want to learn a little bit more about printing and painting 3D models with recent prints, or you're just interested in upskilling and learning as a whole, hit that like button and subscribe. Hopefully I'll bring you more. Thanks.